Thanks everyone for joining us. We have Gavin Lux now available for questions. If you have any questions, please raise your hand. First questions from Alana Rizzo. Let's go ahead, Alana. Hi, Gavin. Nice to see you. Um, what uh, was the reason for your delay to summer camp? Uh, personal information. I don't think it's really anybody's business. Um, I'm here, ready to go, and uh, just focus on moving forward and then what 2020 is going to bring for the season. So, uh, just ready to get planned. Okay, so how did you get ready for the season? Uh, what were you doing in this COVID period to make sure that uh, you were where you needed to be? Yeah, I was uh, actually in Wisconsin. Um, a couple of Brewers guys stayed around. Uh, there's a lot of minor league. A couple of guys, uh, big league guys in the Chicago, Milwaukee area that I uh, got to work out with and uh, do some live BPs and stuff. So I was able to stay ready in baseball that way with uh, my uncle throwing me BP and doing everything I need ground ball wise and. That was really about it. Um, you had mentioned that you would strive and are striving to be rookie of the year, considering you still have that status, obviously, from when you came up last year. Um, what would that mean for you um, to achieve that honor, and, and how do you intend on making that happen? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, it's a huge honor. There's a lot of really good uh, baseball players in this game that are young or rookies or whatever it may be. Uh, I'd rather win a World Series than win a Rookie of the Year. So for me, like that's the main goal is trying to win games and any statistic or accolade or anything that's like secondary. So uh, really, all I just want to do is win. That's really it. What would it mean for you to be the starting second baseman on opening day? Yeah, I mean, I think that's everybody's dream uh, to to be out there on opening day. Obviously, it'd be cool if there was fans there, but you know, you got to do what you got to do. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it'd be great. Um, any way I can contribute, though, that's, that's what I'm focused on. How do you feel right now at the plate? I know you've been taking some extra ABs and simulated games, obviously BP, and then, of course, uh, those inter-squad games since you've returned. Yeah, pretty good. I think um, right now it's just seeing pitches and getting more at-bats. I think I'm pretty comfortable with where my swing's at. Now it's just repetition and getting my eyes adjusted, which, I mean, I was getting live at-bats all quarantine. Um, so I'm not uh, worried about it. That's all. We're pretty good. Finally, for me, Gavin, um, the, since you returned, it's your first look at the new batter's eye. What's uh, been your opinion of it so far? Um, I definitely noticed it. Uh, I think more it's like a light thing. So there's a light coming through and it's hitting the batter's eye, I believe. I noticed it a little bit. Um, but once, uh, once the sun goes down, it's, it's fine. Next question from Dave Vasego. Did Gavin, even with the delay reporting to camp, do you feel like you're not that far behind because of what you just mentioned? Yeah, exactly. I mean, pretty much I think I took like a couple of days off once we first uh, canceled spring training just to travel and stuff. And then I was pretty much working out right away and, and getting everything baseball-wise I needed to, to do to, to feel like I was ready and continue to get better. Um, so, yeah, I feel like I was – I'm ready to go. You know, like I showed up ready to go. How much do you rely on video to get ready for a game? And with that not being what it used to be, how will that affect you? Yeah, absolutely. I think for me, I crush video. Um, I try to break down pitchers, bullpens, what they're doing, like what the pitches look like. And even during games, uh, going in there and watching your previous at bats, seeing where you the catcher set up, stuff like that. I mean, uh, it's, that's a tool that I definitely try to utilize, and I know a lot of guys do, so it'll be a little bit of an of, uh, adjustment. A significant one that will affect you, or do you feel like you'll be able to adapt? I think I'll be all right. Um, I always kind of go for, for feel over um, what's actually happening anyways, but it is always nice to see what the pitcher is doing. Um, so I think it will affect you, obviously, um, but, you know, got to find a way around it. Thank you. Yep. Next question is from Bill Plunkett. Go ahead, Bill. Hey, Gavin. 
There's a lot of talk around the league about the protocols in in place and the things that are being done to try and you know keep everybody healthy and safe. How comfortable are you with what you've had to go through? Um, I feel fine. I think just everyone has to go through their uh, cautions of wearing a mask when you're not out on the field if you're a player. And just keep washing your hands, social distancing, making the right decisions. I think it's it's pretty basic at this point what everyone's got to do for. Um, you know, for this to work. So, uh, you know, you got to do what you got to do. You gotta... How long uh, or how much thought did you give to the option of opting out this year? Um, none. Just, you know, let's play baseball. For me, personally, um, you know, I don't have any underlying health issues or anything like that. So I live on my own, so there's no risk for me uh, giving it to somebody who's at risk, at least at home. You had such a great year last year, really came on strong. Do you feel any loss of momentum in the way this year has gone, the disjointed preseason to it? Um, I wouldn't say momentum. I think it's just you got to get back into swing things with that three-month break. Um, I wouldn't say you lose baseball instincts, but it's just like anything else. You kind of got to get back into it. And, um it's going to be like, it's going to be a crazy year anyway you look at it. So uh, there's, you're just going to have to keep making daily adjustments on uh, what you got to do. You know, keep saying that, but it's true. Thanks. Next question from Edith Noriega. Go ahead, Edith. Go ahead, Edith. Can you hear me, Gavin? Yep, gotcha. Um, so I was just curious about what you thought of uh, the the crowd noise that was played during yesterday's inter, inter squad game, and how it, has it been like playing these games without anybody in the in the crowd? Yeah, uh, I actually thought it sounded pretty pretty realistic, pretty good. Um, it's definitely better than having no sound at all. Uh, you know, it actually feels like you're playing a baseball game, and you don't. You know, have to whisper. I don't have to whisper across the field. Uh, the JT on a shift or something like that. So uh, it helps, makes it feel a little more real. Um, so I actually think it turned out pretty good. And it, it's going to be weird playing with no fans, but it's just like playing in high school or with your boys in the backyard. It's, it's baseball, so I think that's what everyone's just looking forward to. Next question from Kyle Blazer. Go ahead, Kyle. Hey, Gavin, uh, you mentioned uh, spending a lot of time uh, watching video during quarantine. What were some of the main things you were focused on, uh, you know, in terms of improving your game for once you got back to the season? Uh, yeah, I think for me, I wanted to obviously try to stay in as best game shape as possible and, and make sure my eyes stayed all right with uh, seeing pitches and, and staying in both fit and stuff like that. For me, it was just um, I didn't think I really tried to make any adjustments. It was just let's – Keep the, this like uh, keep the momentum going, like what Bill said, and let's you know let's just keep trying to stay hot and as ready as possible. And whenever we get the call to go, you know let's uh, let's be ready to rock and roll. I have another question from Alana Rizzo. Go ahead, Alana. Gavin, just along the lines of what Edith was asking you with her question. Uh, Kike Hernandez yesterday had mentioned that when there wasn't crowd noise, the one benefit is when you guys are on defense, being able to hear the ball come off the bat a little bit more cleanly, a little bit more crisp, so you can have a better defensive position. Could you elaborate on that a little bit of your opinion on that? Yeah, I think actually Kike is probably right on, on, on the point there. I didn't even think about that, but yeah, I think you can get a better read, obviously, when it's louder or stuff like that. I mean, the can kind of get a feel on how hard it's hit or um it just your ears help you obviously it's a sense but um yeah when it's super loud i guess you don't really hear the crack of the bat as much so uh it does affect your reads i think a little bit especially for the outfielders too um yeah that's a good point i didn't even think about that okay thank you another question from bill plunkett go ahead bill kind of uh following up on what kyle asked when you look back at your time in the big leagues last year, what did you learn from that now that you've had some months of separation to think about yeah. it? Yeah, 
Um, just got to be comfortable. Um, for me, it was, I think, getting up here, I just wasn't as comfortable as I was maybe in the minor leagues. Um, so for me, it was just let's, let's be as confident as possible and um, let's go out there and not have any doubts and, and let's, let's go play. And um, I think that's the biggest thing and um, just not getting sped up in the batter's box. Um, those are really the only two things. And uh, I think those two things are obviously very important and will help you move forward. Lessons that I learned, you know. You talk about uh, the team goal of winning and winning a World Series. It, it, can you say that Rookie of the Year is an individual goal that you're aiming for? Yeah, obviously, I think, you know, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't, um, but it's not number one. Thanks. Yep. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, everybody.